Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about In Depth or Out of Love in Sarajevo, written by Faye Weldon. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, this short story is very interesting. Um, it gives us a, a picture into the to the the life of this young woman. Uh, she's in her twenties. She's writing her thesis, uh, and her professor by name of Peter is supervising or, you know, helping her so that she can write a good thesis. Uh, but they develop a romance. They develop a uh, uh, an affair that's unhealthy. Um, inordinate affection, that's what they call it. That's the joke that they use between each other. Uh, and, and basically, what we're told is that uh, the professor, Peter, he's, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to decide. Uh, he doesn't know whether or not to leave his wife and pretty much uh, spend the rest of his life with his student, who's, you know, she's in her 20s. He's in his 40s, she's young, vibrant, uh, and his wife is, is older, and she's a swimming swim coach. Um, and we're being told all of this within the short story by the narrator, who's the 25-year-old student. Um, and pretty much we get the idea that the professor, you know, he's older, uh, he, he, he looks, you know, attractive enough for her. Uh, but she knows that there's an age gap and she knows that he has a decision to make whether to be with her, uh, the, the 20, the, the girl who's in her twenties, who's a student or the wife who's much older now. And we get a lot of information, a lot of comparisons throughout the short story between Peter, the professor, his wife and his student, you know, of course the wife. She's older, she's not interested in his subject as Peter, the, you know, he's a, he's a professor. Um, I would imagine, you know, he always wants to teach. He always wanna tell you, you know what, or did you know, or um, well, you know, or, or things like that. When people are, are academics or when they're educators, there's always like this, these bits of information or, or these things that they want to tell you, or maybe you didn't know. They're kind of like people who are academics uh, or people who are educators, they're, they're kind of like pop in Google Homes and they'll just like want to tell you a fact about something you just said. Or if you're having a conversation with them, they'll just want to tell you something about what you just said. And that's Peter. Uh, and his wife is really not <laughs> that interested in his ideas or in his uh, theories anymore. And to have a young 25-year-old that he can have sex with and, and teach and, and be the superior of and help her with her thesis and hold power over her um, as an older man, that, that, that says a lot for him. Uh, so we kind of, throughout the short story, get an account of they're their, their abroad there he's trying to figure out what to do whether to stay with his wife um or or be with this young woman and you know the 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 young woman here the, our narrator she wants him she wants to be with him that's what we're told at the get go but things change there's a lot that's going on within uh the short story um for one thing we have this this mi mixture of of World War One history, they're, they're throughout the short story. They're talking about World War One, what caused it, the powder keg, that what sparked it. Uh, we talk about Gavilo, like they talk about Gavilo Prince, the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, um, and, and Gavilo Prince's role within that. Um, and, and also our narrator, she uses that scenario to make her ultimate decision uh, within this short story. Uh, we're told from the get-go that this is a sad story, uh, that this is supposed to be a sad story. And throughout the work, man, this work is just filled with information about how what a horrible decision this is. First and foremost, it's a teacher and a student that's never good that, you know, if the, the university knows about this, this is a huge uh, red flag, a huge no-no. And, um, 
you know, they're sleeping t together, they're in bed, and all of that is mixed in with education and mixed in with the Peter, the professor, trying to help out his student. Um, he tells her from this work that she has a good mind, but not a first class mind. So it's kind of like he's all, you know, keeping her down. He's having sex with her. He's keeping her down. He's the teacher, the lover, the educator. He's like above her in every single scenario. Um, yeah, which is very dark, you know, from 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 the bedroom to the academic world to the social world. Peter's just this thing above her. And it's kind of like it's a very a very unhealthy relationship and ordinate affection here. Um, and there, OK, so things like like religion come in. Um, the hotel that they stay in when they're on vacation, they, they give them a bedroom that has two beds in it. So there are some some signs from their reality that, that say that they shouldn't be together. It's raining, it's gloomy throughout the entire time within this work. Again, the beds again, they're split apart. Their bedroom in the hotel, they're split apart. So these people are together, but it's kind of like their world is telling them you're not supposed to be together. Um, so in Sarajevo, they, they see the footprints of Galilo Prince. Well, our narrator sees them, sees the footprints, but the professor, he doesn't see it that well. Um, they have little arguments here and there. They go into a restaurant when it's rainy and gloomy and they can't go anywhere. They can't see Sarajevo, Sarajevo too much. Um, and, um, you know, they have some little arguments here and there. Our narrator sees a younger, uh, a younger man and she kind of like, in some ways she shows some interest in this young waiter that looks handsome. Uh, but when the professors, when the professor sees that he's like, are you interested in him? So there's a little bit of, we see a lot of the professor's personality and how, he wants to be dominant in this relationship. He doesn't like to be corrected. He doesn't like to be um, kind of like, he doesn't want her to correct him. He doesn't want her to, um, he just wants her to stay in her student role and listen to him, you know, be the professor, be arrogant, be dominant, be um, this 46 year old man that's that's that has all the power in this relationship, in this woman's life. I mean, there's, there's at the beginning, she even says, I'm, in, I'm academically, I'm dependent on him. Um, so in many ways, in the get-go, it's, it's kind of like she's this puppet of this professor. Um, so the story goes on. We get a lot of, um, since this, our narrator is the 20-year-old, the, the, the um, she's, she's 25, she's in her 20s. She, she, our narrator, she's telling us a lot about the professor, a lot about herself. Uh, but at the same time, there's a decision that's, that's supposed to be made. At first, we think that it's the professor that's going to make the decision between uh, his wife and this young girl. But really, it comes out that the, the narrator, she makes the decision uh, to, to leave the professor and to not... Um, and to not be with him because ultimately by the end of the work, she comes to her senses. Um, and throughout the work, throughout the short story, you can see that she was going to come to her senses because there's so many signs. The hotel bedroom, the the, the, the weather was gloomy and cloudy. There were, there were several discussions. There were several debates. Um, there are times we can see that she got irritated by his behavior, um, how she felt some interest in a younger man and how insecure he was and, you know, how he always wants to be, uh, how the professor always wants to be in her head and wants to know what's happening in her head. Uh, there's just so many things that that go wrong. And, and if they're, and also the fact that World War One is being compared to their relationship or that she's using World War her World War One to make her ultimate decision says a lot. It's almost like she's in a battleground trying to decide the fate of her life. Um, and ultimately she comes to her senses and decides to leave the professor. And she kind of remarks on Gavilo Prince and saying maybe if he had calmed down um, and come to his senses, uh, maybe he wouldn't have started, you know, sparked 
he maybe Gavril Prince wouldn't have been the spark uh, to the powder keg that started World War One because you know just like how she realized that she wasn't truly in love with this professor that she was just relying upon him and and, and depending on him for for something. And, and like in terms of academics, in terms of progress, in terms of education, I mean, there, there's a lot that was going between the, the 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 our narrator and this professor. But ultimately, she comes to her senses. She leaves him at the restaurant, even though she was hungry, and she 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 just leaves the situation and 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 comes to her senses, and she says. You know, maybe this young man, Gavril Prince, you know, he's he's 19. He kills Archduke Ferdinand and ruins his life. And he ultimately dies um, for it in prison. And, and you know, she's saying, like, maybe uh, if he had come to his senses, all of this wouldn't have happened. And, um, you know, she leaves the professor, leaves, she leaves Peter. We're told that Peter tries to get her thesis rejected, but she prevails because she she even gives us a comeback. She's like, you know, I do have a first class mind. I'm paraphrasing here, but she kind of tells us like, you know, I have a first class mind after all. And and the professor Peter told her that you know you don't have you have a good mind, but not a first class mind. Um, so we kind of see like this woman, this young woman in her twenties. She develops a conscience uh her own personality she stops depending on this professor stops relying on him for everything and she becomes her own woman um and, and that's that's her story um in terms of analysis in terms of deep me deeper meaning here there's a lot going on here you have the world war the world war one aspect and gavolo prince and making decisions you have all of the the signs and figures about you know you guys shouldn't be together the hotel room i'm going to say that again the hotel room the weather uh the fact that peter tells her that you know we we got to pay separately for everything the fact that everybody's judging them the fact that people feel like they they they're the, the age gap is too big uh the fact that they kind of seem like uh, you know elder and student or master and student you know, because what happens is you, you're getting a mixture of older man with younger woman, uh, a, a teacher with student, married man with, you know, an affair going on, academics, uh, the dominant role that Peter's playing in her life. Because, I mean, he he pretty much has all the power, um, lover, teacher, um, man who is deciding how her her thesis and a thesis for a person in the educational world or or for a person in terms of academics a thesis is a very important it's a very uh, important work in in uh, in a person who's trying to get a, a degree or in a person who's trying to advance in a field a thesis is very important um, and to have a man like to you know Peter is this thing in her life that that is. Again, he's her lover, he's her her teacher, um, he's, I mean, the levels of power that he has on, on um, in her life is immense. And the fact that she's able to break away from that and come to her senses and, and ultimately become her own independent being is, is really significant here. Um... Because she flat out tells us that, you know, she was dependent on him um, academically, but I think it was for more than that. And it was indefinitely, uh, the title of this work is uh, in, in Depth or um, or Out of Love in Sarajevo, um, Inordinate Affection. I mean, this is, this is the definition of an unhealthy relationship. Society looks down upon it based on how they're treated in hotel rooms and restaurants and things like that. Um, Peter looks down down upon it because he can't make a choice. He can't decide whether to be with his wife or with his mistress. Um, the academic world looks down upon it. Teacher and student, never good. Um, she looks down upon it because she ultimately realized, you know, she doesn't really love him. And also she was interested in other men or she found that waiter to be attractive. Uh, so there's so many things, you know, in conflict within this short story um the the power struggle 
um, definitely, I would even say that their relationship is a powder keg. And, um, you know, it was the powder keg since she came to her senses, since um, she doesn't end up marrying her professor and, and going on being this subordinate thing in his life. Um, their powder keg, I feel like, to, in my perspective at least, I feel like their powder keg uh, was not lit up and it did not explode into a World War I. But, but Gavilo Prince, he was the spark to the powder keg of World War I, if that makes sense. So another way to look at this short story is, is as if we, we get two powder kegs side by side, we have the powder keg of World War One, and we have the, the powder keg of this young woman's life and her academic future. Um, and one lit up and exploded and the other didn't because she, I, in my perspective, I think she ultimately comes to the right choice. Um, and, and I think it's a good choice. I definitely think it's a good choice because I feel like their relationship was just a fling um, and a fling that, that you know, had immense... Uh, consequences uh, for for both well for all parties for I mean Gavilo Prince got his consequences Archduke Ferdinand got you know he was killed he was murdered and and you know the professor I'm pretty sure he's hurt because he was ditched at a restaurant by himself um, his wife is hurt because you know her, her husband the, the Peter's wife um is back at home thinking that her husband is having an affair and the young woman um i mean even though that she doesn't end up with the professor i mean it's a very murky business of having this professor who was your professor also being your lover also being your 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 guide for uh your development edu like in, in the educational realm it's 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 very messy definitely very messy um but but yeah that's what happens within the work i think um you can look at this uh, there's so many ways to look at this i mean you can see feminist uh ideas or or women gaining identity or women I mean, there's def definitely famous um, feminist ideas here because you see a young woman um gaining her own identity, coming to her senses, um, even beating him later by saying that she, she, you know, he tries to reject her thesis, but she fights it and she, she gets approved. Um, she, she comes to her senses. And so you, there's some feminism in here, or from my perspective, I see some feminist ideas in here, uh, or, or maybe like a, like a woman fighting for what's hers and winning. That's definitely in here. Um, you definitely see like Peter's a horrible, horrible human being because um, I think the, the reason why he was so interested in this young woman is because, first of all, she's young and, and attractive and beautiful. Um, his wife is not interested in, in his, you know, in him that much anymore. They've been married for uh, several decades. So the passion in his wedding is, is in his um marriage is not where it's supposed to be um he doesn't like to be uh, corrected he likes to hold all the power he likes to, to blabber on about what he thinks is right and important uh several points oh this is one thing that really that really um, um that i really paid attention to is how whenever she said something how our narrator whenever she said something um and maybe she wasn't in, she was incorrect you know, Peter would pretty much, well, you know, you're not right about this. I'm paraphrasing here, but in some ways he would be like, uh, well, that's not correct. That's definitely not correct. Um, I think it was this number, not that number, or I think it was this and not that. Uh, so he definitely becomes the stickler. And whenever she says something wrong, he corrects her. And again, in a relationship, that's never good. That's never good. At some at some point, you would be pissed if if the person that you like kept on correcting you like you're stupid. Uh, so their relationship would have never worked out. Um, and um, ultimately, you know, our narrator makes the right choice. 
Um, and, and that's my perspective on this short story. That's the summary and my uh, deeper analysis of it. Uh, yeah, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.